Hi guys, it's Marianne from Thrive Admin Services here. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you how I customize my planner boards in Microsoft 365 on the web in my client portals to give them uh, some branding and to uh, just give them a little bit more of a Thrive feel and how you can add images to the boards so that you can brand them a little bit more than Microsoft uh, settings allow for you to do. So I'm going to share my screen. And what I've done here is I've um, actually, I'm just gonna take my logo off the top there so you can see what's going on. So um, what we've got is, this is a, a board I use in a lot of my training and in the videos, you'll have seen it before. So this is a planner board, it's in Microsoft Planner, it's through Office on the Web, and it's available for free in your Microsoft 365 business subscription. So uh, we've done other videos before that talk about how I set up the boards and how I use them uh, as part of my project management, both internally for Thrive and with clients. What I wanted to show you today is how I get these uh, customised look on the boards in a way that aligns with Thrive's branding and that makes it, um, it takes it to the next level so that the client looks at it and goes, wow, this is pretty professional. At least I think that's what they think. So um and how I get around some of the limitations currently with Microsoft Planner in terms of being able to add that style. So you will have seen previously, uh, when you name your board, what you can do is you can actually, um, when you are putting the plan name in, um, and it can be anything you like, Microsoft will suggest some backgrounds for you. Now, um, the first way that I style them up is to use a word that represents kind of what I would like the image in the background to be. I often use things like grow, and I get a couple of these options, which you can see are a little bit more like thrive. Um, I've occasionally used cactus because the word succulent doesn't seem to work. And then I get that option again, or um, I get a few different little cactus styles. Um, I think if I put in succulent, which is the word I use for lots of other things, again, sometimes I get the colour scheme that's close, um, but typically the one that I tend to use is I type in grow and most of my clients get this one. Um, this one fits really nicely with the boards or the buckets that I use because it's about growing or moving along the boards in succession to a completed or finished product and it just happens to line up with where that plant is, so it works really nicely for me. Um, and then obviously I would go back in uh, once I've changed that I pop it back to the name of my uh, test client board this one I call test client two because I do have another board um, and then it's it's all back to normal and everything looks fine so after we've created our buckets and we've set up uh, some of the tasks that we want so you'll see there is that other video where I talk about what my layout is and my process keep it really simple is my my process so we have an admin bucket a to do in progress and complete and if you've worked with something like Trello is probably the closest one that I can um, refer to for you here in Trello you can customize your boards you can customize your tasks you can rename your lists and have those customized with backings and those sorts of things this is how I get around that for uh, Microsoft Planner when I create the task uh, and we create the task and pop all the details in as normal, you'll see that at the top of each bucket, this task is just got a period or a full stop as the title. And so when I create that, I'm going to do it in a new bucket so you can see. So I'm going to call this test. We've got a bucket now called test. Now I add the task and I'm going to just put a full stop in and hit enter. And so I now have this task. Now it looks different to all of these because it doesn't have a heading. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually gone into Canva and I've created all of these graphics in Canva. So I have a Canva Pro account, but you can do this with your um, free account as well. There's absolutely no need to, um, you don't need to have the paid version for this. And this is where I talk about sometimes there are tools that can help you work better in Microsoft 365 um, and Canva is one of them. There are limits to what you can do graphically within some of the 365 programs. And that's where Canva comes in um, for those of us who aren't graphic designers. So what I've got here is I have got, the way I've done this is I've actually created a blank social media image. Um, so just the square, which is usually 1080 by 1080 or 1200 by 1200, depending on which platform social media post you choose. And then what I've done is I've resized it to a 500 by 500. 
nice and neat. Um, it's the size that actually some of my uh, logo graphic files came in from my graphic designer. So it works really well and it appears on the screen. Then what I've done is I've gone into photos and I've chosen a photo for the background um, and made it fill the page the same way that I would for, um, you know, if you're doing a backing on a social media post. And then this is a, I've done a white rectangle and I've popped the text and the text is the header of what the bucket is. So that, um, that bucket, that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Rectangle. I forgot the word for rectangle. That rectangle, um, you can see on the screen there, it has a width of 507 and a height of 177. I've got it centered on the page. So it is perfectly centered. And then I have my text. This is my brand text and I have it at 40 point in my brand color. And it again is perfectly centered. Each page I've done, um, so I, then I've just, once I've got one, I've duplicated them and I have created one for each thing. And then you can see I've got slightly different background. Um, I have put a transparency on it because it's a bit bold at full um, because of the particular photo. So I pop a, um, I make them about 35% transparent. Um, and then I've got, these are the actual tasks that I have. Um, and then these are the names of the buckets. And you can see I've actually named the page as well um, to do. And then I've got some of my internal ones that I use as well. So once I've created all of the bucket, all of the different headers that I want, I download and I download all pages. It downloads as a zip file. And the joy of doing it this way is that the names of each page come out in the zip file. So when I save them, if I jump here, um, I get a whole folder. I rename it in my downloads folder and then I open it up and that's all of the names that match the page names. So that's much easier than having to go in and manually name them each time. And they're all here. Once it's been downloaded, what I've actually done is I have saved it to my Thrive Toolkit. So it's actually sitting in my branding one, my planner images here. And when I create a new board or a new SharePoint site for a new client, I copy that whole folder into their admin folder. Okay. But for now, that one is sitting in my test client folder in their admin folder. And when I go to the planner, what I do here, if I was to say I want to call this, let's pretend we're, we're going to make this the um, admin one again. So I would go down here to the attachments and add attachments. So you can add them from anywhere on your computer, so you can pull them straight out of your downloads, but it will just plonk the image straight into your documents folder for that client. If you want to keep things neat and tidy and not have the files blocking up everything, move the file or copy the whole folder with all of the graphics into your into a folder on your uh, OneDrive for that particular client. And then you choose from team files. That's going to open the documents folder for this client. Then I've popped it inside my admin folder. You can see there it is, Thrive Planner images. And here are all of the images. So here I'm going to make this the admin one. It just needs to be that when you move the cursor, it's the highlighted one. And you hit save. And you can see that's it there. Sometimes show on card will be uh, highlighted. Sometimes it won't. So show on card and you can see in the background there that it's already highlighted. I'm going to close it and now you can see it's here. It beautifully fills the page. The 500 by 500 graphic fills nicely. I used to use something more like um, a Facebook banner shape, you know, a nice long rectangle, but I got grey above and below. So this works much better. So um, again, I will show you. The other thing I can do is I can copy this task and I can copy it with the attachments if I'm doing it in this particular plan. So if I was moving this task and I was moving it into bucket test, copy, you can see it's done it exactly the same. Um, so once you've got them set up, it's a really handy way. Um, and of course, you can see this is the old version. So if I wanted to, I can go in and edit this task. To do that, I click on it to open it up. I can remove this one, I can add from team files, admin, my planner images, 
And this one, I can say this is a document template, show on card, close, and you'll see now that looks much better, okay? Um, and we'll close that one up. So that's how I do it. I hope that this has been really useful for you. If you have, I'll just stop sharing my screen. If you have any questions about working with Microsoft Planner and you're interested in being able to do this for yourself and for your clients, then you can get in touch with Thrive directly. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session or we can have a free chat and see what we can get through in our 45-minute chat. Um, you can do that via our website, thriveadmin.com. Alternatively, if you're interested in continuing to grow your knowledge, you can subscribe to our channel and you can join our free Facebook group, Microsoft Dynamos, which is where we share more tips and tricks like this. There's free training every month and we can answer questions for you in the group, both from myself and from the other users, um, of the other group members who are using Microsoft 365 for business. If you've liked this video or enjoyed this video, please like it. Please subscribe to our channel so that you stay up to date with everything that's coming out. You can also follow Thrive for more tips and tricks on social media. You'll find us under uh, search for Thrive Admin Services. We hang out on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Pinterest, um, as well as here on YouTube and, of course, in our Facebook group. If you have any other questions um, and you would like to get in touch directly, you can uh, contact me directly via marianne at thriveadmin.com or you can send a request through via our website, thriveadmin.com. Thanks.